All right, welcome back to another how-to. Uh, one of the viewers wanted a charge-up fireball. You know, I have to hold the mouse down and charge it up and then fire it. So here we go. Here's the effect I'm going for. It looks bad, but it'll do the basic ideas for you. I hold down the left mouse button and charging, 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 and release, right? If I don't charge enough and I let go, nothing happens, right? I have a sort of limit. You have to charge for a little bit. You charge past that limit. And these balls actually have damage too and so the longer you're charging them up the more damage they're going to do when they hit the wall and even though the graphics look messed up you know deal with it okay let's see how it's done all right let's see how we're going to tackle this charging fireball first thing i'm going to do is going to go to the player create i'm going to give them some variables associated with this task and one of them is going to be charge and i'll set the charge to zero and the other one i'm going to do is I'm going to do ball ID. Now this is going to remember the instance ID of the fireball that's charging up. Now remember instance IDs are usually big numbers like a million and above. Game Maker sort of seems to give you negative four if it doesn't exist, right? There is no instance ID. So I'll just remember negative four for now. There is no ID number I'm remembering because I don't have a ball being charged. Now, that's it for those two variables. The idea being that this charge is going to go up when they press the left mouse button. And if they release the left mouse button and there's enough charge, it should fire the ball. So let's see how this works. This was here from a previous tutorial, global left pressed. And just to show you, it was firing an arrow towards the mouse, right? There's a little point direction towards the mouse. What I want to do this time is I actually don't want to use global left pressed. I just want to know if the mouse globally has the left button being pressed, right? So not the pressed itself action, but is it being held down? That's global left button. So I'm going to use that one. And if the left button is down, there's really two situations that could be uh, taking place for this example. Either the player is trying to attempt to start charging a ball, or the button is down and they're currently charging a ball. So I'm going to handle both of these. So let's ask. If my charge is currently zero, I know they're not charging a ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set the charge to one. And I'm going to create a instance of the fireball. So instance create. I'll just make it to the right of me for now. Y, O, fireball. And notice how when it creates it, it sends back the ID. And I'm remembering that inside of ball ID. I know the ID of this ball. This will let me control it later on if I have to. Okay. So charge is one, and that's really it. Okay, I'm charging up. Now the other situation here is maybe the charge was already above zero. So I'll just sort of ask here, if my charge is greater than zero, and remember, even if I just made the ball, I set my charge to one. So this will take place in this same event here. If charge is bigger than zero, I'm going to make the charge go up by one. I'm also going to limit it to 30. Now let's make it 90. Okay. If we're doing this one per step, 30 steps a second by default, you know, let's limit this to 90. So if charge gets bigger than 90, charge equals 90. All right. So I'll just sort of plateau it out. And that's sort of that. So there's the charge going up. Okay, and up and up and up. Now, to actually see this work, right, you can see right now we can give this a quick test. I'll be able to left press, and I should see a fireball being made, but just one. Okay. And as I hold the button down still, it is charging up, and the charge value is going up. If you wanted to run the debugger, you could do that and actually see it happening. So let's talk about releasing this ball, and then we'll add the effect of the ball getting bigger as we charge it up. So here we go. I'm going to go to add event, mouse, global mouse, left released, right? I want to re detect when they've actually released the left mouse button. Now when they do detect the release of the mouse button, I want to ask a question. I want to know if charged is uh, more than zero, because if charged is zero, well, there's no charge, right? So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to say if charge is zero, I'm just going to exit out of here. Okay, I'm not going to bother doing anything. I'm also going to put a little requirement here that they had to charge for at least 
uh, let's say, 45 steps. So a second and a half or so. So if charge is less than 45, I'm going to actually destroy the fireball. I'm going to say that wasn't long enough to release it. Actually, let's do this. Let's just make it a little smaller. Okay, let's make this a little smaller here. I'll say if you do it less than a second, right? So if the charge is less than 30, I'm going to say with ball ID, because remember, that's that ID that I'm remembering, right, when I made the ball. I'm going to say with ball ID. For now, I'll just say instance destroy. It'll look bad, but, you know, it gets the idea that it'll just destroy. You weren't charged up enough. Later on, you can make it more fancy, right, like fade out or do something weird like that. Okay. And now we have one last situation here is we have if the charge is greater or equal to 30, you actually want to tell our fireball to take off and fire towards the mouse, right? So let's do something like this with the ball ID that I made. Let's send it off. Speed is 8 and direction towards the mouse. Point direction from its XY towards the mouse X and the mouse Y. Now, once you do that, we also sort of want to clear out any of our variables that we are using to do our charging up. So while we release it, let's set our charge back to zero. And we no longer need the ball ID thing. So I can say ball ID, just set it back to negative four, right? We don't have to bother remembering. That ball's gone. We never want to control it again, right? It goes to live its own life. Now, Will this work? Let's see what happens. Not bad. Now it's not making new balls when I press. That ball just sort of lives forever and forever and forever. I thought I set the charge to zero. So let's see what I did wrong here. Oh, I already see what I did wrong. Those of you that caught that, beautiful. I don't want to have this inside of the with ball ID. That's the fireball, right? Fireball has no charge, no ball ID. So let's sneak that after that with statement. There we go. Now we're out of the with statement, and I'm back into the player. There we go. This should fix things up. Now, some of you probably want to know uh, the ball should be more powerful. If I held on longer, I'll add that in the last second or two. So I hold a bit, let go. If I just go quickly, you'll see the ball's just destroying itself, right? Now, I can already see something I did wrong here. If the charge is less than 30, with ball ID destroy, and I should also set the charge to zero and the ball ID back to negative four because I destroyed the ball. Okay, this should actually make it work almost perfect now. That's the nice thing about programming. You sort of rush and do it, right? Charge, not working. Hold on longer. Release, off it goes. So that's the basic structure of it, right? Now let's add some pizzazz to this and make the ball get bigger as, it, uh, as the ball gets bigger and charges up. So here we go. When we have the left button being pressed, right? Or sorry, just the left button being pressed. I had this code here, right? So if we just made the ball, right? The charge was zero. We set the charge to one. We make the ball. If the charge was bigger than zero, I just keep adding the charge up, right? And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm going to try to keep the math simple here, right? Uh, I'm just going to do a little scale. Based on the charge, I'm going to change the size of the fireball that I'm charging up. Now remember, since I know it with ball ID, it's easy to do. So here we go. I'm just going to sneak this in right here. Okay. Change size of ball. So here we go. I'm going to do a little local variable here. I'm going to call this one, uh, I'll just call it sizer. You know what? I'll call it scale. And I'm going to set the scale equal to the charge divided by Let's see how big we want the ball to get. Let's just be absurd here. I know my maximum charge is 90. So if I go 90 divided by 30, that's going to give me a scale of 3. 
and that's three times the original size so it's going to be obviously getting bigger so I'll just leave it at that for now um, so that's a good scale I also want to make sure the ball isn't too small so let's just ask a question here if the scale came out to be uh, less than let's say 0.3 I'm going to set the scale to 0.3 okay there's there's no way we can be smaller than 30 percent the normal sprite size and I guess the scale of, if you like the scale of 3 being your maximum, that's fine. You don't have to put this part here, but if the scale goes over 3, scale equals 3. Okay, it's sort of unnecessary for this code, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to have it in there. And let's actually do the change. So I'm going to say with ball ID, image X scale equals scale, image Y scale equal scale. So whatever that scale I just calculated here, which of course is going to get bigger and bigger as the charge gets bigger and bigger, the scale will go up. I assigned the X scale and Y scale to the sprite of our fireball. And so it's going to get bigger and bigger. Now another nice thing you might want to do here is uh, you might even want to do a little rotation to it. I'll just take a gamble here. image angle plus equals I'll just say plus equals scale we'll see what happens here let's spell it right though there we go so let's see what this actually does now we should actually see the ball getting bigger and we'll see what happens when it's released all right here comes our charge up and charging 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 release and off it goes right now that image rotation is way too slow. You know, that's not that great. So I'll fix that in a second here. But you get the idea, right? How you can start to affect the graphics. The other thing you could also do if you wanted to finish this off here. So let's say I could go scale times 10. That'll at least make the angle start to turn a lot faster. And I'll actually make it turn the other way. So I'll minus off the image angle. And I guess the last thing you might want to do is you might want to let the ball remember how powerful it actually is. So to do that part, you can actually go to the fireball, go to the create event, and you can give this fireball its own little charge variable. Now remember, this is its charge variable. Actually, to make a point, let's call it damage. And I'll say by default, the damage is zero. But we'll say that when we eventually release the fireball trying to see where that is right here I will set the damage of the fireball equal to now I'd like to set it equal to the charge of the player but remember that this with statement has taken me inside of the fireball objects code so I want the charge variable from outside. So remember that you can just go other dot charge, and that's the player's charge. So now that fireball gets its damage set. So when it hits something, you can actually do something like this. You can say when fireball collides with wall, you can just do a little show message, right? Show debug message hit with hit with and show the damage right so it knows its own damage and so here we go the final test and hold the mouse down release no not charged enough hold it down for the two seconds off it flies and it hits now, I'm not seeing that message. Oh, there it is. Hit with 39. Hit with 46. So it's remembering, right, if I charge up a lot, you know, for the couple seconds, there it is really big, and release. Bam. Hit with 90, and that was the maximum energy, right? So not a bad little structure there. Hopefully it didn't seem too long to do, but I've tried to do it in a way where it gives you more control of the objects, right? You're charging, and after they've released. So... Enjoy that one, have fun, and uh, maybe I'll just do one last little thing here.
right before I release it. I'll do a little effect, create, above, ring, 1, X, Y. No, I did that wrong. X, Y, size 1, and color red. There we go. And that's the final code. Have fun. Hope you like that. And now we have the charging fireball that releases and bam. Phew. Lovely. All right. Have fun. Enjoy. Hey, guys, if you like this video, why not click the like button or even better, subscribe to this channel, share it with a couple friends. That's what keeps us going. Thanks.